between the senators and the Okay, House we're back. We're live. I'm Jay Fidel. Happy to be here on a given Monday. And Asia in Review, more Asia in Review. Just last hour, we talked to uh, Richard Turbin, who is the new chair of the East-West Center, learned about his plans and aspirations for the center. And now we're talking some more about, about East-West relationships here in Hawaii. Uh, so we have Russell Hanma. He is uh, a, the, the, the uh, author of the APEC Master Plan. You remember APEC. Uh, how was that, three years ago, four years ago, yeah? Yeah, I think that, uh, thank you, Jay, for uh, inviting me today for the Think Tech Hawaii. Uh, very honored to be here today. Uh, going back, I, I was like in year 2011 uh, when Hawaii hosted the, uh, the APEC conference here. And luckily, the, I'm glad that President Barack Obama brought the APEC conference to Hawaii. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but it's over now, Russell, and we have to figure out ways to achieve the same glory going forward. Yes, sir. Yeah, I got that in mind. And that's what I drafted of the APEC Master Plan in the following year in 2012 in Vosteka, Russia. And we wanted to claim Hawaii as the uh, regional northern uh, headquarters. And I had at back, back then we had uh, Mayor uh, Peter Kaulau. We had a resolution uh, more like proclaiming Hawaii as the headquarters. And uh, we were going to submit that to the uh, in Russia and Vostoka, Russia, but uh, I guess the State Department kind of put a hold on it, saying that it was too early for us to uh, proceed in that manner. So we oh, had gee. to hold that one. But that only means <laughs> you just have to keep working on it. That's all. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, so you know, as you know, in the in the past, you know, we've been hosting so many international conferences here in Hawaii. But you know, what's ironic is that we never follow up on it. We have a tendency to exchange business cards and meet these uh, <laughs> business leaders and uh, uh, foreign diplomats and uh, you know, the heads of the state, but uh, you know, we don't really follow up on it and see if we can you know, generate business or come up with some kind of uh, initiative so that state of Hawaii can benefit well, from Well, let's those. dwell on that for a minute, Russell. I mean, I, you know, after APEC was over, I was involved uh, in, to some extent in APEC too, um, uh, because we were a tech organization, we, were, we created the tech exhibit. It was called uh, See It Hawaii. Um, and uh, that's over now, but uh, af after the APEC was over, you know, we thought, and we talked to Brian Schatz about it, of creating a mini APEC, which never happened, in Hawaii, organized by Hawaii, um, to bring people to Hawaii on a regular basis from all over Asia Pacific. And that would include the East-West Center, but it never happened. Query. Can it happen now? Uh, is that what you're talking about to, you know, extend the legacy uh, of Hawaii as a, as a place for APEC or APEC-like conferences? Uh, good thing you asked me that, Jay. I think uh, there's a good platform that we can use. We can use the, uh, the TPP, so-called a Trans-Pacific Partnership, which uh, about a month ago, month and a half ago, uh, all the 12 members of the uh, of the APEC countries that belongs to the TPP, which these countries are like Australia, Brunei, Canada, Chile, Japan, Malaysia, Mexico, New Zealand, Peru, Singapore, Vietnam, and United States. And in Auckland, New Zealand, uh, all the 12 ministers got together. These are like the United States Trade Representative. We had our uh, Ambassador Michael Forum, uh, who represents us on the trade agreements, who's part of the Executive Office of the President. And uh, he was there signing with the 12 ministers, and that became official. Now what we have to do is uh, we have to bring it, the, each 12 countries have to take it up to their own parliament or to their Congress and uh, tell them that they signed a trade agreement, just like we have to go take it up to the U.S. Congress uh, with the fast track, the Trade Promotion Authority Bill. Like if you look into the uh, technicality in terms of rule of law, in 1974 we have a trade agreement, so called the Trade Act, which includes the fast track, the Trade Promotion Authority. So we want to include it in the Trade uh, Act that says that uh, you know the TPP can be the uh, the 21st uh, century trade agreement. Yeah, so it's the TPP members, roughly 12, yeah? Yes. Uh, as opposed to the 21 members in APEC. Yes. So, and, and the common point is that they're all signatories to the TPP. Actually, uh, right. There, if you look at the uh, history of uh, the trade agreements with APEC, in 1993 uh, in Bogar, Indonesia, uh, that's when they hosted it, and that's when the ministers all got together and wanted to create a voice of concern for these uh, trade agreements for the free, uh, 
within the Asia Pacific region to have a free trade agreement. So what happened in Bogart Doctrine, they said by year 2025, we want all APEC countries to be belong to this free trade area for Asia Pacific region. And uh, so I brought this idea of, uh, matter of fact, I, I had a resolution uh, which I helped draft through the state legislature this session, both the House and the Senate, uh, making Hawaii the uh, headquarters for TPP. That's, that's on the table. You yes. Have that here. Uh, matter of fact, uh, I have one here on Senate concurrent uh, number 133. And I have a House concurrent resolution uh, 153. Yeah. And basically, they're companions. They're companion. Uh, so, what hopefully this session we can pass this and send a message to the U.S. Congress as well to the 12 members that the state of Hawaii is a major player here. We, we are the gateway of Asia. Yeah. And we are willing to uh, host this. Yeah, but on an ongoing basis or just w once in a rotation? Actually, we eventually going to have to have a secretary general here, like you said, having a mini APEC kind of thing, but this is more geared towards a, a trade agreement, yeah. which creates businesses to okay, come so here. And, and that's different than APEC in the sense that all the parties in this, uh, in the TPP agreement, the TPP group, um, would be uh, signatories to the TPP. Yes. That, that brings them mm -hmm. together. Yeah, because APEC has mm -hmm. so much diversity. Yeah. They're like a uh, uh, so United Nation in a way yeah. where they have different committees or uh, they got to uh, look into different measures like health care, uh, environmental issues. More than uh, trade, much more than trade. Trade and facilitation, yeah. uh, how you're going to do the import-export and with the customs regulation, yeah. uh, clearing between uh, non-tariff and tariff uh, barriers here. Okay, let's talk about TPP. Tell the people what it is and what it's supposed to do. Okay, TPP is actually is a, uh, it's a f uh, free trade agreement. It's a regional trade agreement uh, with 12 countries, uh, which Japan became a member, the last member. I know there's other countries that want to become member. South Korea wants to become a member. Philippines want to become a member. Uh, even China is showing that they want to become a member, even Taiwan. and So all these APEC countries want to become a member of TPP. And uh, so what it does is we ha there's a group of uh, uh, more like the it's a next caliber, it's a high caliber trade agreement for the 21st century. It's not only just import-export regulations, but this can involve uh, trilateral uh, partnership with three or four countries to host a, a joint venture kind of projects. A good example is like mining for natural gas or uh, uh, offshore drilling for uh, crude oil. So not every deal is between all the 12. Some of the deals are just between a couple of the 12. Yeah, that can be possible, yeah, uh, yeah. But, there, but you have to set up terms and conditions, the rules. What are the, um, what are the rules, uh, rules relating to you know, duties, for example, tariffs and oh, the like? Okay, each country went out before. Uh, this was mentioned in my APEC master plan I drafted because I know there's going to be some uh, ramification coming out of it. So uh, you got to come up with a bilateral trade agreement first, country to country. Mm -hmm. So if, when country to country has this bilateral trade agreement, they understand the terms and conditions, which commodities, which resources, how the investment service is going to be applied. And then they got to go with the uh, 12 members got to pre agree up under the, in a bigger picture and based on... They adopt what the, what yes. the smaller group yes, and decided but, on. Yes, but they have to meet the WTO's requirement. There's a big umbrella, uh, World Trade Organization. Yeah. They have all the trade agreements uh, with the terms and conditions, so you can Google that and get the, uh, the scheduling and uh, uh, the actual trade agreements all about. So this would be, what, tariffs? Yeah, tariffs. Uh, it could be uh, uh, partnership. Uh, joint ventures, uh, more like uh, uh, even with health care, coming up with a universal health care program for yeah. these 12 countries. Investments. Investments as well, and yeah. working with the medical industry. Yeah. So they can use their HMO uh, insurance ah. as well. We can go to their country and use their insurance so, as well. Now this needs to be done for TPP now. Yeah. It, it hasn't it, been done yet. It hasn't been done because each country has to go through their parliament or through their congress yeah. to approve it. Yeah. And as soon as that gets approved, like in the United States' case, uh, we got 90 days to approve the trade agreement. From which, when? Uh, I think it was submitted back in uh, uh, December. 
when we so approve it. 90 them. days is going to be up soon. Yes. So hopefully, I hope they don't use this as a hostage for the election year coming up. Well, but, this uh, is real risk. I mean, there are a lot of people in the in the campaigns that don't mm -hmm. like TPP, and uh, there's a lot of people in Congress don't like TPP. I mean, how how solid is it? How how likely is it yeah, that TPP think, is going to be adopted? I think if you look at from a more of a uh, from a micro aspect compared to macro, if you look into the details, it really benefits us more of in tremendously, not only for the multinationals or the U.S. corporations that's uh, uh, involved with import export, guiding, buying cheap products and services from uh, Asia, but we want to be an exporter as well and promote the. Uh, by, by American provision, made in U USA products to be yeah. exported. And yeah. it gives all the small businesses the entrepreneur approach. Like if you have a small, medium com company, you guys can, they can be an exporter themselves. And I myself, when I started out, you know, when I was starting in New York City, uh, you know, I was going through all these trade shows, trying to come up with uh, merchandise to represent certain uh, a retailer or manufacturer and take that sample to those countries. I used to do that a lot with the U.S. Japan back in the 80s when uh, when R Ronald Reagan was a president and uh, at that time Prime Minister uh, Yoshiharu uh, Nakasone and we had a lot of this trade war going on between the high-tech <laughs> wars. Like, you remember the times that Japan was controlling the 65, 64K RAM chips and for the personal computer for the Silicon Valley and uh, the super tech, high tech war between uh, IBM, Hitachi, and NEC. And so, you know, those kind of things, those are healthy trade uh, war that we had with Japan. Well, and from now, that came out. But, more uh, of a but some of these candidates, and I'll, you know, I'll mention Donald Trump, um, you know, say that uh, the result is that we lose jobs, that the U.S. loses jobs, and we have lost X number of jobs because of this free trade idea. Um, uh, now, I, I, I know which side of the fence you're on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's clear. Mm -hmm. But, you know, uh, how do you answer them when they say we lose jobs? What, what's your response to yeah, that? Yeah, I guess uh, when you look at it, uh, you know, it's hard to get the statistics of the numbers. Uh, you know, that can be a lot of uh, propaganda that the politicians use. But if you look at the details in you know, like U.S. Commerce, I know the U.S. Commerce uh, came up with a report that the, uh, American business is going to benefit based on uh, the TPP agreement that we're going to have. We can export a lot of this agriculture, farming goods, uh, even small, you know, made in American uh, products that we have. Uh, we, the, the factories can benefit if they want to become going more of an exporting yeah. as well. So. so it's not just high tech stuff, it's all kinds of stuff. Exactly. And it's tit for tat. Mm -hmm. You know, if you do this for me, I'll do this for you. And presumably the negotiation leads to uh, you know, uh, equal footing, a win win deal, mm -hmm. presumably. Um, so, okay, w when we come back, I'd like to hear from you the pros and cons on both sides of it. Um, and you can tell me, uh, you know, how you think this is pl going to play out. Because it, it's very important. Mm -hmm. I mean, not only, you know, in the immediate, but also in, in, in the shadow it will cast over, uh, you know, U.S. Uh, involvement in trade around the world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's Russell Hanma. Uh, he's uh, a, an author of the, the author uh, of the APEC Master Plan uh, for the APEC Conference, which was like four or five years ago here in Honolulu. And uh, we're talking today on Asia in Review about Hawaii's place in the Asia Pacific region with Russell. We'll be right back for more. Aloha, I'm Kili'i Akina, president of the Grassroot Institute and host on Ehana Kako, a weekly program on the Think Tank Hawaii broadcast network. Ehana Kako means let's work together. Think of the sad alternative, let's not work together. Here in Hawaii, with all of our diversity and the richness of the people, it's important for us to come together around issues on the, the basis of what's right, what's good, and what's going to serve the common good. And that's what we try to do at Ehana Kako. Every week we interview movers and shakers, people in government, business, and other sectors of society to talk about how to create together a better government, economy, a better world here in Hawaii that can bless the rest of the world. I thank you for your attention to Think Tech Hawaii, and we look forward to seeing you every Monday, 2 to 3 p.m., on the Think Tech Hawaii Broadcast Network. We're Ehana Kako, and we wish you well. Aloha. We're back. We're live here on 12 O'Clock Rock with Russell Hanma. He is uh, author of the APEC Master Plan, talking about 
Hawaii's place in the Asia Pacific region today on Asia in Review. So Russell, you know, give us the pros and cons. Uh, you know, try to stand aside from your own mm -hmm, inclination mm -hmm, on this. Mm -hmm. uh, what would you argue pro? What would you argue con on Congress's decision to approve or not to approve the TPP? Yeah, I can tell you, you know, it's no brainer here. But uh, in, you know, we see a lot of uh, people talking about APEC. You know, can uh, or, or the TPP can lose a lot of jobs for the United States. Uh, manufacturing because uh, they're thinking that there's going to be a cheaper labor in China or through the Asia Pacific region the developing countries or, uh, or emerging economies can manufacture uh, more of a better cheaper products and export it to the United States going through like Walmart Kmart Target stores you know you, you got you look at their brands that is uh, mostly are made in China with uh, the plastics because we're not meeting the EPA standards with their uh, because of the, the smog and the smoke that's coming out of the plastic factories mm -hmm. or even tire companies that's making a lot of tires overseas because uh, our EPA regulations doesn't fit for those requirements because we'll be fine big time. So that's why we were using those third world countries <laughs> for, those, for those aspects. Let them do it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but uh, to be on the pro side, I think, you know, uh, TPP can benefit tremendously. You can look at example like uh, Japan and South Korea did. You know, look at what well, Japan started so many manufacturing plants in the United States, and they I incorporated their own uh, American corporations. A uh, good example is like uh, the automobile industries here, or the, or the electronics firms, uh, from not only from Toyota, Honda, Nissan, you know, from Sony Corporation to Panasonic to uh, all these uh, electronics firms that started uh, started factories there and created jobs for the American uh, yeah. workers, yeah. so-called yeah. the blue collar and workers. And they're good at it. Yeah, and we've seen the but, same thing but, with the South Koreans. But uh, people ask, you know, why don't we do that? Why don't we create these products mm -hmm. and why don't we create these factories? What's happening is a foreign company, whether it be from Asia or Europe, comes in and builds their product mm -hmm. here, uses our labor and our market mm -hmm. You know, and uh, uh, sometimes there's something we could do ourselves. Why don't exactly, we do it ourselves? Exactly, Jay. That's where TPP comes with the partnership with uh, yeah. forming this joint venture kind of consortium yeah. uh, with trilateral or multilateral trade agreement. We have two or three countries together, start up a factory in the United States and build it and re-export it out. And that's the idea. So you bring everybody together. Exactly. You put them in joint ventures exactly. and partnerships. Exactly. That's, that's the idea of TPP of creating this partnership uh, trade agreement yeah. is all yeah. about. Yeah. So uh, what's it look like in Congress? I mean, it, it sounds like it's, you know, it's, it's an issue in play. Uh, Trump and others, at least on the Republican side mm -hmm. of things, don't like it much. Mm -hmm. I guess uh, the president likes it. Hillary Clinton likes it. Uh, she's one of the architects, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, but um, you know, we, it's not. It's not. This is not. A, an, we can't assume this is going to be passed, can we? What is. What is the. Uh, what is the sausage machine say? Uh, I think. I think my hunch, uh, understanding the how the Congress operates. You know, election year, everybody says one thing, then they turn around after the election, <laughs> after they get in office. You know, they. You change, heard it here. They change their yeah. mind, <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> but I think it, you know, in this case, you know, we we can't decide on who's between Democrats or Republicans or independent. We all have to be Americans. We're representing the United States as a whole. What's good for our country or good for our state of Hawaii, mm -hmm. we have to proceed in that fashion. Yeah. Now, how about Hawaii? You know, it's a special place. I mean, you've been talking national, but let's talk Hawaii. Oh, but yeah. How does Hawaii benefit or maybe not uh, by virtue of a TPP? I think Hawaii is a tremendous place that we can benefit. Uh, I think uh, the, the leaders of the TPP, when we hosted the conference last year in Big Island, in Waikolola, as well the following, uh, I think it was in uh, June or July, we hosted in Kona, or not in Kona, in Maui. Uh, so we hosted two times with the TPP negotiations uh, meeting here. And these uh, negotiators and uh, delegates and the diplomats that came here, they were so happy that, you know, we have an ideal climate here. We're openness. We can do things with transparency, with due diligence, and show that we're uh, more fair in that way with our aloha spirit. And what's ideal is that we have so many ethnic people from Asia Pacific. We have 
all those 21 countries that belong to APEC people, we have cultural bilingual people. These people can bridge the gap between their country and Hawaii and the United States. So yeah, I think yeah. we have a big, uh, it's like a melting pot here already, and we're the gateway of Asia. And it's an industry for us. It's an extension of the hospitality industry, but it's more than that because it makes us look good. It makes us look like a, a world center of diplomacy and trade. That's mm -hmm. terrific. Yeah, exactly. One thing uh, is that we can use our American law here. We're the 50th state in the union. Yeah. And uh, we do things with the transparency and uh, apply our international law as well. And I think that's what the, these uh, smaller countries are looking up to these big and Big we countries. have the emerging possibility of becoming a media mediation arbitration center. And Mark Sklob, as a local attorney, mm -hmm. is going to do a program on that in a few weeks. Oh, yeah. I want to I want to see what you know the status of that is. It's been discussed for a long time, mm -hmm. but maybe this can come to pass. And it's directly related to what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, right. Because we do have to establish. I did bring this to our Chief Justice uh, Mark Rectenwell with the uh, Hawaii Supreme Court that he was always looking into the International Court of Justice here. Because if we do become the headquarters for TPP, we have to mitigate some of these trade disputes with countries and uh, uh, so that you know, Hawaii have to formulate this uh, International Court of Justice system here yeah, so yeah, we can yeah. mitigate those kind of terms. Very important. Uh, uh, other things like, as well with the International PUC with the uh, Public Utilities Commission because, uh, you know, there's a lot of energy concerns and uh, how you're going to mitigate joint venture, offshore uh, mining, especially with we have all this dispute with uh, territory dispute with uh, China right now because of the 9-9, uh, you know, the freedom of navigation issue with the United Nations Congress that... Uh, oh, sure. So and those they're kind being of things. so aggressive exactly. about Exactly, and Hawaii can play a major role in mitigating these kind of yeah, measures because yeah. we have our U.S. Pacific Command here as yeah. well. The other thing about uh, a, a, a international PUC is that we've been doing Pacific Telecommunications Conference every January for years, decades already. Uh, we went, Think Tech went and made a movie of that in January. Mm -hmm. It's a very robust conference. They come from all over the place, Asia and other places in the world, to negotiate deals on telecommunications. You know, cable, cables, satellites, you have it. And so um, you know, we, have, we already you know, are invested in mm -hmm. that kind of thing. It's only a step away to have exactly. an international we have our, Yeah, we have our infrastructure intact already, and yeah. uh, it's just that getting all the players together and uh, they understand what Hawaii's all about and we can do things with due diligence and transparency yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. So, but China is competing with us, no? Uh, you mentioned before the show began, I wasn't aware of RCEP. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we have the 12 uh, p partners of TPP, the Trans-Pacific Trans Partnership, but then we have RCEP. What is that and what is China do doing with it? Okay, I can tell you about RCEP. It stands for Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership. Uh, they formed that in November in 2012. It, uh, it actually generated from the, the BRICS when uh, China wanted to form this uh, Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank. T and t tell about BRICS. Too. The BRICS is a, uh, it's a, it involves five countries, Brazil, Russian Federation, India, uh, South Africa, and China. Uh, I remember like when we, remember back in 2013, was it? Or well, when Brazil hosted a World Cup in soccer? Yeah. And that's when uh, China went over there and they're t getting Brazil to formulate this B-R-I-C-K, we call it BRICS. And uh, they needed to orchestrate a banking system. So that's when they formulated that Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank, which China invested $50, million, $50 billion in. They're asking other countries to join in, which United States and Japan is not a member of AIIB. Could we be? Or? Actually, we can be, but we just want to make sure that, because uh, the United States has the World Bank that we sponsor, as well Export-Import Bank, uh, and Japan invests on the Asian uh, infrastructure bank is, which is located in the Philippines. You know, this all sounds like um, a competing soft power. In other words, uh, <clears throat> as a matter of foreign policy, you know, we want to have soft power everywhere. We want people to like us. We want to do mm -hmm. deals with them, help them out, uh, help them out in times of, you know, distress, mm -hmm. weather, other calamities. Mm -hmm. um, China does the same thing. China sees what we do. Mm -hmm. China m makes investments in all these places. China tries to bring together groups, does trade deals. Mm -hmm and competes with us. And mm -hmm. sometimes they do better. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, you know, we've had a number of shows talking about how China does this in Southeast Asia, for example. Mm -hmm. 
and it uh, looks pretty good for China. And uh, query, are we, are we still, you know, uh, appropriately competing with them? Yeah, but you got to watch out for China. I know there's all this for the past 10 years. Uh, they did a statistics for study that everything what they promised that they're going to give economic aid or, or helping the uh, the third world country, they only delivered 10 percent of whatever they promised. Really interesting. So, yeah. and now, Thank you for mentioning and that. And now this past uh, weekend, this, this is the latest news that uh, I know that AIB, the chairman, has asked uh, What's what acronym is that? Uh, Asia Infrastructure Investment Bank, yeah, that okay. the BRICS formed, yeah. and they're asking uh, Japan's uh, chairmanship, who formulate the Asian Infrastructure Bank in Philippines, to join in or possibly work together on some of these uh, infrastructure uh, projects. So, if uh, the U.S. wants to stay, mm -hmm. you know, in a leadership role, it has to deal with that. It has to do better. Exactly. It, it has to. It, PT, PP, uh, PTT is TPP is very important. And, uh, and if we if we if it falls second to RCEP, we don't look so good. Yeah, exactly. That's why we want to bring the headquarters or keep the uh, Secretary General be located in Hawaii. That way, uh, Hawaii is a you know we can avoid all the bureaucracy in Washington D.C. or all this other country. We can do things with uh, fairness, with the spirit of aloha, and uh, have these trade delegates come here. Uh, with uh, ambassadorship as well with the trade minister and the CEOs of the business and negotiate a business deal in Hawaii. Yeah. And Hawaii is an ideal location. From yeah. there, we can orchestrate, be like a, a training company. We're like state of Hawaii is the intermediator. Yeah. We're the hub of the Asia Pacific, mm -hmm. so the gateway of Asia. So basically, we want these people to come here and enjoy our uh, environment, that we're clean, we're safe, uh, we do things with due diligence and fairness. So so it's, a great, it's a great dream, but uh, mm -hmm. we're going to take a short break, and when we come back, I'd like, I'd like to ask you exactly how do we do that, step by step, agency by agency, government, uh, you know, government uh, officials and, and legislatures, mm -hmm. you know, what do we do? So that's uh, Russell Hun Hunna. He's uh, uh, an author, uh, the author of the APEC Master Plan back a few years ago. Here on Asia Review, we're talking about Hawaii's place in the Asia Pacific region. Very interesting. We'll be right back. Aloha. My name is Reg Baker, and I'm the host of Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. Business in Hawaii is a program that is positive stories about business in Hawaii. Uh, we're tired of hearing the negativity and why it's the wrong place to have a business. We talk about the positive reasons for having a business in Hawaii and, and how to be successful. We broadcast live every Thursday at 2 o'clock. We look forward to seeing you. Aloha. Hi, I'm Donna Blanchard. I'm the host of Center Stage here on Think Tech Hawaii. I hope that you will tune in and watch the show. It is inspiring and uplifting and educational also. We talk with artists of all different ilk. We talk with them about what they do, how they do it, and most importantly, most dear to my heart, why they do it, and it, it never ceases to be fascinating when you get the answer to that question. I hope you'll join us on Center Stage, 2 o'clock Wednesday afternoons. Aloha. Okay, we're back. We're live. We're here with Russell Hanma, uh, author of the APEC Master Plan, um, and uh, we're talking about Hawaii's place in the Asia Pacific region. So the question left hanging before the break was, okay, great. I want it. We all want it. How do we do it? Who, who goes forward first and what do they do? I think, you know, there's basically we want these policy makers uh, from the state legislature uh, who have helped me introduce this uh, uh, Senate Concurrent Resolution 133 and uh, House Concurrent Resolution 158 uh, to move on. And basically, uh, uh, the, if you look at the resolution, it tells you that we want to send a message to the U.S. Congress because uh, the Congress have to decide on the TPP trade agreement if they're going to approve it. And we want to put a language in the Fast Track Trade Promotion Authority under the 1974 Trade Act saying Hawaii is designated to be the headquarters. And prior to that, we need to send a message to the 12 members of the uh, ministries uh, that belong to the TPP members because they have to vote on it. Yeah, want, we yeah, want them to support we, we this want, idea. We want, yeah, we want them to support it. We're not, we don't want to fast track it or work behind their back. We want to you know, keep them in the ball game, saying that Hawaii is the place. Please 
Uh, this is our proposal. So who leads the initiative? Is this something the governor should be doing? Actually, the governor should, uh, and I brought this up to uh, Governor David Ige and his staff members that uh, uh, we need to uh, send a memorandum or some kind of message. Uh, I think the resolution calls for it to be resolved at the end, where it says, whereas, 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 to be resolved. We're going to ask the governor to write up a memorandum and hopefully uh, send a message to all the leaders of the TPP as well as the Congress that Hawaii is willing to host. We're, we want to host this TPP. We're willing to spend the money. Exactly. And, uh, so they ask for federal funding? And, and other thing is uh, not only the federal funding side, but we can, that will come later with time. First thing is we have to get this in the books. We yeah, have to yeah. do go, go according to the rule of law and make sure that we're established here legally and hopefully so we, we have to bring in the federal government plus that's congress plus um all of these asia pacific tpp partners mm -hmm. um that's not going to be too easy is yeah, it it's, it's a, but eventually somewhere somebody or some country is going to be the tpp headquarters or and possibly uh, yeah. and have a secretary general yeah so timing wise i think uh if we show effort with the community's help, with all the environment, with the Chamber of Commerce here, the Ethnic Chamber, the Airlines, Hawaii Tourism Authority, the Hawaii Hotel Association, anybody, you know, the small businesses as well. Uh, we can all benefit together tremendously because, you know, being in Hawaii, we have all this ripple effect that affects from uh, uh, businesses that comes yeah. from us. So I think uh, if we can get the investment, hopefully if we can have like a World Trade Center here and designate that as a World Trade Area and do all the trade negotiations in there. And the thing is, I wanted, I was thinking in terms of the mechanics side is that we can run it like a duty-free shoppers at airport kind of concept. That's a foreign, a foreign trade zone. Trade zone. Yeah. And anything that we negotiate the business deal, we're going to help manage the trade agreement, the yeah. status behind it. Yeah. And hopefully we can get a management fee. And uh, maybe we'll generate enough revenues to put it back in the uh, general fund. And if that happens, all those import export that's going between Asia and United States, and we manage it all. We can be the wealthiest uh, state in the whole nation. Well, that's the bottom line. Hawaii yeah. wins a thousand times mm -hmm. with having being the headquarters. Mm -hmm. There's no downside to it at all. And it brings with it all kinds of other deals and possibilities. Exactly. It makes us a headquarters for more than TPP. It makes right. us a headquarters community. Exactly. And we can, be, we can be the leaders of the 21st century here. Yeah. And uh, we can gloom the young uh, uh, keikis coming up. And uh, just today I was at the legislature with the uh, charter commission. I was talking to the school that, hey, you guys could start some kind of international school for uh, the youth program, not only in open college level, but you guys got to orchestrate in a faction where that we're educating the youth and the keikis to be more international and learn about the geography, learn about what's going around your the countries around Asia. So, what kind of um, you know, uh, what kind of response are you getting from the legislature on your companion resolutions here? Oh, actually, uh, I had a hard time educating them, but uh, I did educate for the past three or four years. I've been sending them a lot of uh, emails and uh, periodicals and uh, a lot of my write-ups and the things that I critique. Uh, uh, so they're very, you know, the Senate side very uh, akamai about it, and I had a hard time educating the House of Representatives. So, because uh, they're so afraid what the unions and the labor management of the blue collar workers. But I told them that this is what not. I mean, they're worried about it. They worry about losing, losing their jobs, jobs kind of and that, yeah. Like but I told them this is Hawaii. We're in the middle of Asia. We're limited here. Even our labor uh, forces here with agriculture and farming, and we're not going to lose anything more, so we're going to benefit from it. Yeah. And uh, we're going to bring in, because 98% of the goods that we consume here, we have to bring it in from Asia or from the mainland by shipping. And the shipping includes both ocean and air. And ocean has a, a so-called uh, international uh, uh, conference carriers which uh, conference carriers are the ones that's registered, just like airline has the signatory carriers. And they're the ones that's licensed to do operate. Uh, so do you have champions uh, there in, in the legislature who are you know, especially excited about this? Oh, yeah. Matter of fact, uh, yeah, I had to ask uh, our, our 
my good friend uh, Glenn Wakai, who chairs economic development, and uh, even a new Senate president, Ron Kochi, mm -hmm. and Kalani English. Uh, I guess he took over uh, Gilbert Kalahili's position because when he passed away, he was chairing the Tourism and International Affairs. So uh, Kalani, uh, Senator Kalani English, is, uh, took over his committee since he was the vice chair of the Tourism and uh, International yeah. Affairs. Now, Russell, I'm sure you were there. It was at the end of APEC a few years ago. Governor was Abercrombie, um, and there was a there was a special ceremonial agreement made between Hawaii and uh, and China, and um, we were going to have all kinds of connections by virtue of this agreement, and it was in the Senate chambers. You remember you were there? I'm sure. Oh, you I heard something and, like and that. Kalani like English mm -hmm. spoke, mm -hmm. which, and it really stunned me that he is fluent in Mandarin. You know, mm -hmm. did you know that he's fluent in Mandarin? Amazing. Um, and he spoke in Chinese, and the Chinese guys loved it, you know. And it was, it was all very heartrending, mm -hmm. but you know what? Nothing happened. Mm -hmm. This is what I worry about, you know. Unless we have a deep and abiding understanding of this, mm -hmm. and a deep and abiding interest in making it happen, I mean, everybody, it won't happen. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, you know, resolutions aside, mm -hmm. somebody's got to run the ball after that. Mm -hmm. This year, next mm -hmm. year, the year mm -hmm. after. And the governor has to be completely unambiguous about it, don't you think? I mean, how can we make that happen? Uh, we gotta. I guess we have to have a lot of the, not only the government officials trying to uh, uh, mitigate or you know mandate this uh, policy, but we need a private sector to go through more not not so like a privatization kind of concept. But we need everybody to. Uh, we need a, a special office maybe, just to. Uh, uh, like in the, in the governor's office. In the mean? governor's office. I know that back in we used to, when John Wahey was the governor, we had an office of international relations, uh, basically with DBIT as well. And you, you don't know, have that anymore. I think it, we have a strategic marketing division uh, that runs the uh, international side, but I think they're not, you know, working as up to par. I would say to get things going, but. Uh, but we need a lot of help from different organizations. I, I personally can't just spearhead this and, you know, I've been trying to do this for the past four or five years already, but, uh, you, know, I'm, you know, to me, I got people to be, you know, I wanted to educate the leaders as well to realize what the ramifications are all about TPP. You've been working very hard. I've seen you working very hard. But, um, you know, why? why? Why are you so committed to this, Russell? Uh, this is Russell Honda. It's yeah, really you know, because uh, I've been in New York City. Uh, matter of fact, I, you know, I was pretty much born internationally. Uh, I was born and raised in Japan. Uh, my father's from Hawaii. Uh, right after the World War II, he went there. Uh, he was stationed in uh, uh, in Japan because he was with the U.S. Air Force at the time. It was Army Air Corps, so uh, he was there for like 45 years. So, and I seen how Japan, after the post-war, has a uh, so-called a miracle, economic miracle recovery they had. And, you know, that back then, like in the 80s, uh, when U.S.-Japan relation was one of the 60% of our gross domestic product between Asia and the United States was generated between U.S.-Japan trade alone. So I seen what, what they went through with the trade barriers and uh, dialogues they had and the hard times they went through and how they made it better so that they became our number one ally, our partners in Asia. In so season. many ways. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So I can see that with these developing nations that we're trying to proceed with our American influences that, uh, and involvement with TPP, that we want to be the leaders of the 21st century here in terms of rulemaking. Yeah. <clears throat> You're, well, uh, what, a, what a wonderful way to devote your time mm -hmm. and life. Russell, you know, but it, you, you, you imply that it's not just TPP, it's not just trade, it's not, not just having, you know, uh, uh, organizations and infrastructure here that bring people together, that we, Hawaii, ha has a special strategical place in, in Asia Pacific. Um, and, and that goes hands in glove. Maybe that's, that's part of the persuasion mm -hmm. to say it's, it's not just TPP, it's not just trade. It's more. It's, exactly. It's, it's, for, it's, it's the extension for, of the U.S. Right, and I think mm -hmm. you know it's for our future, for our kikis too. Uh, they're going to be the ones to carry the torch. You know, we can plant the seeds, and we can see it nurture, and uh, they can grow. And 
but you know we want to get these uh, uh, so-called you know the children of the future to learn about internationalism and what's happening in the Asia Pacific region. Therefore, we need a president who is an international president. Don't you think? I mean, and for a lot of reasons. It's not only Asia, it's Europe, mm -hmm. too, and the Middle East. Mm -hmm. It's everywhere. It's all, all the emerging countries and all our old friends. We have to be the world's leader. And this is what you're talking about is a statement of leadership, at least in the Pacific. But it's a mindset. And I, you know, I do not understand the rhetoric where some candidates get up and say, we don't need any of that. We don't care about that. We're going to be king of the hill no matter what. I'm, I'm not sure that's true. Um, what, what do you want in your president going forward? I think we've got to show that uh, we're, you know, we can meet them half away at least. And, uh, and I think that's what the Asian countries are looking at, a, a sense of direction and leadership from the United States that uh, we're willing to sacrifice our time uh, to work with them as well. And you know, from there, they want to grow and they want to learn from us. And there's so much uh, attraction that uh, the agents are looking up to Americans right now. And yeah. they want to see that sense of direction coming from the United States. And we need to glue the American leaders to understand what Asia is all about, what agents are all about, and how they, how they how, what their mentality is, how, why they think that way, why they do they act like that. Yeah. And from a Western point of view, we look at them differently. How, well, you know, where do they, how come they dressed up differently? Or how do they talk differently? Why do their religions are different and compared to But we've got to understand where they're coming from. And I'm sure that uh, agents look at us differently as well, and they're accepting what, uh, you know, we're all humans. You know, we have all our needs and wants. Yeah. And when it comes down to it, I think this having this uh, trade agreement with TPP or just working with the Asia uh, community with APEC platform is going to, you know, bring peace, security, economic development, and prosperity to the Asia Pacific region. Yeah. Will you come back and talk to us some more about this, Russell? Yeah, definitely, Jay. Okay. I'll be more than happy to, uh, you know. Yeah, one literate. other question is, uh, have you ever thought about running for president? No, I don't think um, I'm a, I'm a Japan-born, foreign-born, even though I'm a United <laughs> States citizen. Uh, I don't that I got to change the constitution. I think our former governor from uh, California, Arnold Schwarzenegger, wanted to be the president. So. <laughs> you, you'll have some flack on the debates. Huh? <laughs> That's Russell Hunma, uh, author of the APEC Master Plan. Uh, and um, here we are on Asian Review, talking about Hawaii's place in the Asia-Pacific region. There's much more to discuss. We'll bring him back for that. Aloha.